This week, the president is introducing what the trade representative has, has come up with, which is to tie our hands in Congress and prevent us from reviewing these trade deals. That's the so-called fast track, okay, the fast track to hell. All right. The fast track legislation that the trade representative is putting out this week in the Senate do, does uh, some interesting things. First of all, it prevents any amendments by any subcommittee or any committee in Congress. Secondly, it prevents any hearings. You're not allowed to have any hearings in any subcommittee in any committee. Third, you're not allowed to have any changes in the bill even when it's on the floor. Okay, The floor of the Senate, the floor of the House. Fourth, you're not allowed to have any filibusters. When's the last time you saw that happen? Okay, You're not allowed to have any filibusters in the Senate. Fifth, it gives us this much opportunity to debate. Each member of Congress, including yours truly, each member of Congress gets 88 seconds. Oh my God. 88 seconds to debate whatever trade agreements the president presents to us. Okay? This is it, all right? I mean, seriously, now that I've explained all this to you, shouldn't you call your congressmen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Shouldn't you call your senators? Yeah. Shouldn't you tell them, this is crazy. Say it again. Bullshit. Louder! Bullshit. The NAFTA itself did something that any economist would have told you before. It was totally impossible. NAFTA managed to impoverish both American workers and Mexican workers for the benefit yeah. for the benefit yeah. of multinational corporations yeah. and only multinational corporations. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, and then roughly 20 years ago, everything went to hell. Mm -hmm. Everything got all screwed up. Now, what happened 20 years ago? NAFTA. 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 Right. NAFTA is what happened 20 years ago. That's right. NAFTA went into effect in 1994. Yes, yeah, some of you, some of you, that's the good case can be made that Reaganomics had screwed things up earlier. I'm aware of that. Certainly the, the anti-union antipathy of the Reagan administration definitely had a downward effect on wages. But, but what I'm talking about, I believe, is a bigger effect than that. I think this is bigger than that because the numbers are bigger. Listen to these numbers, okay? These are real numbers. I've been doing some research on this. I've been doing my homework. In the first 200 years of our history as a country, we never had a trade deficit of $135 billion or more. Never. Not during the Civil War, not during the Great Depression, not during World War I, not during World War II. Never happened. Never happened in all history that we had a single year we had a, 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 a deficit of $135 billion or more. Every single year since 1994, when NAFTA went into effect, our trade deficit has been $135 billion or higher. Right. Every single year. Now, what is that deficit? It sounds like some obscure yeah. mathematical concept. It's very simple. The deficit is we're buying their stuff, and they're not buying our stuff. Right. That's what it is. It's A minus B. It's X minus Z. It's That's what it is, OK? They're, we're buying their cars, their washing machines, their refrigerators, all their, their their building materials. We're buying their stuff, and they're not buying an equal amount of our stuff. And and NAFTA made that possible. NAFTA made that happen. It can't be. Yes, and the multinationals made that happen because they make a profit from trade that takes that money out of the neighborhood. It's no longer a question of. You work in the factory, you get paid, you pay the landlord, the landlord who has a stake pays the waitress, the farmer goes and he buys some farm equipment, made in the United States, blah, blah, blah. It takes it out of our hands entirely. It makes that possible. It corporatizes on a very, very large scale, a very large part of our economy. And the results were immediate. The same year that NAFTA went into effect, we had our largest deficit in history, and the results were dramatic. How dramatic? This dramatic. This is how dramatic. In the last 14 years, we've had average deficits, average trade deficits of a half a trillion dollars a year. That's $1,500 every year, $5 a day, for every single man, woman, and child in this country. Okay? And the cumulative trade deficit, when we started this period, we were the largest creditor country in the entire world. When NAFTA went into effect, People owed us more than anybody else in the entire world, more than the Germans, more than the Japanese, more than anybody, okay? Now, we owe other countries $11 trillion. $11 trillion. 
trillion dollars. Okay, that's thirty-five thousand dollars for every single human being in this country. We're not talking about money that the government owes to rich people. We're not talking about what poor people owe to other people. We're not talking about credit card debt. We're not talking about mortgages. We're talking about what we owe to foreigners. Eleven trillion dollars. And that number is growing at half a trillion dollars every year. Half a trillion dollars every year. So right now, when you look at all of the wealth in this country, every single asset, all of the stocks, all the bonds, all the big businesses, all the small businesses, all the lakefront property and the ocean property and the farms, everything, even the cars, the mortgages, everything. Already, foreigners own one-seventh of the entire U.S. economy. <laughs> Every single asset in this country, add them all up, foreigners now own one-seventh of it. Why is this not in the newspapers every day? Really? Why isn't there some ticker somewhere, some debt clock that tells us it's 11 trillion, 11 trillion in one, 11 trillion in two, 11 trillion in three, 11 trillion in four. The, 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 it's like the termites have now eaten the entire house. Okay, there's almost nothing left. All right, so what happens? Wages get driven down. Of course they do because our $30 an hour workers are competing against 30 cent, uh, 30 cent an hour workers in other countries. They're lucky if they get 30 cents. I mean, in many places around the world, $2 a day is a good wage. All right, so, so that issue. In the other countries, they don't have environmental protection. They don't protect labor unions. Exactly. In Colombia, since we signed our trade agreement with Colombia, over 100 union organizers have been murdered. Okay, so what do they care about labor unions? All right? Over 100 have been murdered since the Colombia Free Trade Agreement went into effect. So they follow an entirely different set of rules. They have child labor, they have prison labor, they have slave labor, and they're competing one-to-one -one against our workers in this country. So they're driving our wages down and down and down for the benefit of multinational corporations. In fact, NAFTA itself did something that any economist would have told you before. It was totally impossible. NAFTA managed to impoverish both American workers and Mexican workers for the benefit yeah. for the benefit yeah. of multinational corporations yeah. and only multinational corporations. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 one problem is the declining wages that we see. Another problem is a chronic lack of demand. Right. Why is that? Because we're bleeding half a trillion dollars every single year. We have to make it up somehow and we do all these <laughs> crazy things to try to make it up. The federal deficit is caused by the trade deficit. Okay, if you have a $16 trillion economy and you have only $15.5 trillion of demand, you've got to make it up. Otherwise, you'll have 15% unemployment, like in Spain, like in Greece. Why does it happen in Spain? Why does it happen in Greece? Because they have similar situations and they can't make it up any other way. They're not allowed to run deficits. They don't have any monetary policy. So, in fact, the people just suffer. Okay, now, what we try to do is we paper it, we paper it over. For an entire generation, we've dragged women into the workforce here. Okay, so where we used to have one worker in each family, now we have two. That's one way we've tried to paper it over. Another way we've tried to paper it over is the federal deficit. The federal deficit, dollar for dollar, is an effort to make up for the lack of demand because we are buying their stuff and not buying ours. In addition to that, our monetary policy, by historical standards, is insane. The, the, by, by some measures, the money supply in this country, as controlled by the Federal Reserve Board, has quadrupled quadrupled in the past seven years. So that means that every dollar you had in your pocket seven years ago, in some sense, is worth one quarter as much. It's worth a quarter. At least you got change out of it. <laughs> okay? So our monetary policy is a function of the fact that we're buying their stuff, they're not buying our stuff, and the Federal Reserve is trying to paper over that problem with cheap money. With, with zero interest rates now that have gone on for more than five years. Yeah. The interest rates for banks in this country has been zero for more than five years. Mm -hmm. It costs them zero to borrow. And they mark it up to 17.5% <laughs> on our credit card statements. Right. But that, that, that's, that's why we have this problem. Inequality in this country is a function of our trade policy. Why? Because we buy their stuff. They don't buy an equal amount of our stuff. They end up with those rectangular green pieces of paper with pictures of dead presidents on them. 
and they have to do something with them. They're not just going to keep in their pocket. The Federal Reserve is making them worthless all the time. What do they do? They take that money and they don't buy our goods, they don't buy our services, they buy our assets. Yeah. They buy our assets. Eleven trillion dollars worth of our assets net. Okay? They, they buy our assets. So who does that benefit? Who owns our assets? Well, half of our assets are owned by the top one percent. So if they buy a million dollars worth of stuff, five hundred thousand dollars of that goes right to the top one percent. All right? It doesn't create any jobs. It doesn't, it doesn't cr create any demand for goods and services. It's simply paper shuffling. And it ends up making this country the fourth most unequal country in terms of wealth in the entire world than any other industrial country in the entire world. And, and any other, yes, it's intentional from the benefit. This is, this is an economy that has made almost everybody poor, yeah. poorer than they would otherwise be. We've gone from an economy of 4 and 5% per year growth to an economy that's lucky to eke out 1 or 2% growth. By the way, while we're on this subject, the growth last quarter was zero. Yeah. It was zero, and this is in the midst of an employment recovery. Yeah. It was zero. So what, <clears throat> what are we left with here? We are left with a problem that is getting more and more difficult, worse and worse all the time. It's getting worse to the tune of over a billion dollars a day, every single day. You go to sleep tonight, you wake up tomorrow, the trade deficit just grew another billion dollars while you were sleeping. Okay, That's how bad it's been. We are in this deep, <laughs> deep hole that causes a crazy monetary policy, a crazy fiscal policy, uh, enormous inequality in this country, enormous inequality in the country. And in fact, the greatest inequality that we've ever seen, even worse than it was at the time of, of the just before the Great Depression, and and for what, for what, so that we can make Coca-Cola rich, so so that we can make Halliburton rich, so that that we can make Microsoft rich, that we can make Google rich, you know who are who are the companies that actually end up benefiting? Whoever trades internationally and nobody else. Walmart is the primary beneficiary of this trade policy. Nobody else, and we end up paying for Walmart's profits through our food stamp payments. We pay for their, their earned income tax credit. We pay for their Medicaid because Walmart won't pay enough to its own workers. So that's what we end up with. We end up with a, an economy of cheap labor and debt slavery. We are now about to make things enormously worse. Right, we're going to make things enormously worse. This week, the president is introducing what the trade representative has, has come up with which is to tie our hands in Congress and prevent us from reviewing these trade deals. That's the so-called fast track. Okay, the fast track to hell. All right, the fast track legislation that the trade representative is putting out this week in the Senate do does uh, some interesting things. First of all, it prevents any amendments by any subcommittee or any committee in Congress. Secondly, it prevents any hearings. You're not allowed to have any hearings in any subcommittee in any committee. Third, you're not allowed to have any changes in the bill even when it's on the floor. Okay? The floor of the Senate, the floor of the House. Fourth, you're not allowed to have any filibusters. When's the last time you saw that happen? Okay? You're not allowed to have any filibusters in the Senate. Fifth, it gives us this much opportunity to debate. Each member of Congress, including yours truly, each member of Congress gets 88 seconds. Oh. <laughs> 88 seconds to debate whatever trade agreements the president presents to us. Okay? This is it, all right? I mean, seriously, now that I've explained all this to you, shouldn't you call your congressmen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Shouldn't you call your senators? Yeah. Shouldn't you tell them, this is... Crazy. Say it again. Bullshit. Louder. Bullshit. Louder. Bullshit. Louder. Bullshit. Louder. Bullshit. I can't hear you. 